right, ladies and gents, let's go. Uh, welcome to the webinar. We'll get started in a few moments. I will let everyone join, and then we will begin with our topic for today, which I think is going to resonate with many of you, because I think it's one of the biggest levers that we can pull as traders. Uh, before we get started, we'll get started at 6 o'clock. Um, I will let everyone get in and get comfortable. Get yourself a notepad, if you're that way inclined, tablet, dictaphone, phone who's just dictaphone phone maybe you can take some audio notes there's some cool app apps out there now by the way um and i use chat gpt app a lot to kind of talk through ideas and thoughts and then say to chat gpt and the, and the app actually the native app is really smart because it does this hey can you put that out into kind of four or five key bullets for me to go back and think about so if i'm out for a walk um i've got a beautiful but a countryside near me, I've got to have a walk during the trading day. I can sometimes, I don't want to be involved in technology fine, but sometimes I want to kind of talk through some ideas and thoughts and and, and things that are on my mind. And ChatGPT is very good at kind of taking that and I can instruct it to take these cluttered thoughts and distill them down into a couple of ideas. And I take those and then I put those into my notes app. So there's loads of stuff out there that you can really leverage to help you, um, you know, take notes. Well, how did I get onto that? Why was I thinking that? Ah, taking notes in webinars. Yes, if you're in a webinar, it's a great way of doing it as well. You can maybe use your app and just kind of say some bits and pieces that come to mind. And I think that the, the secret, uh, ooh, fringe one that words you use uh, in a trading webinar, the secret, the, the, the secret, if you like, to kind of taking good notes is to, or to getting the most from webinars, should I say, I believe is kind of going in with what what are you trying to get from it? And I think if you go in, I do a lot of this with reading books. I'm not saying I'm, I'm you know, the absolute expert at learning by any stretch of imagination. Some things take me way too long to learn. But I go in with the objective of, okay, what's important to me? What am I trying to move forward with now? And how can I take that one thing away from this book or this webinar? So I think that's a more effective way of learning than going in just saying, oh, I'm just going to listen to it all. Because we know that some things don't resonate, right? Some things don't hit the mark. But if you've got a goal and objective that you're trying to achieve right now, then I think you go into a webinar or you read a book or you read an article with how can this help me with that goal? And then when your mind is focused on that, it's the reticular activator looks for things to support and help you with that. And I think that's a very good way of kind of progressing through because you know, it's like you go in a webinar, you go, that's kind of cool. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, I like it. And then you forget it. But I think if you go in there with that objective of how can it help me get over this hurdle or get through this challenge, then I think that's a much more effective way of doing things. Uh, we will get started, ladies and gents. Um, not much markets. Oh, we've, we've crude's off a little bit. Gold's off a little bit. Silver's off a touch. Of course, China's off. Um, Nas trying best out of the bunch today. Uh, we're still waiting to resolve a few bits. Anyway, we've got a bit of data coming out uh, this week. Of course, one eye on inflation, one eye on the elections, one eye on the Middle East, lots of stuff having an impact on the markets. Maybe you're a pure technical trader and you don't care about that. That's absolutely fine. Anyway, today, we're not talking about technicals. We're not talking about strategies. We're not talking about any of that good stuff, which I think is super important. We're talking about discipline. And something that's really uh, important for all traders and was super important to me and is still super important to me. So building discipline, habits of leading traders. Before we get going, I just want to remind you, ladies and gents, of course, as we're doing this in, in conjunction with uh, Pepperstone, if you're trading a spread better or CFD product, just understand that it's a really, really um, risky instrument to trade. Leverage is a double-edged sword. You can make a lot of money very quickly. You can also lose a lot of money very quickly. So personal responsibility and all that good stuff. Understand what you're trading. If you're brand new to trading, double check what you're doing. Double check uh, how to place orders and all that other good stuff. If you're an experienced trader, always have one eye on the risk. You know the score, boys and girls. I hope you do by now. But I always have to say this because I don't want anyone going into trading and losing money because they didn't understand the risk. It's losing money. It's fine if you understood it, you took the trade, fine, that's one thing, but not understanding the risks um, is another. So please just double check that. And it might not be for you, and that's fine if it isn't. But if it is, let's go. We've got something important for you today I think you'll find value from. Okay, a little quote from uh, Tom Hugard's book here. Um, I think it's on my bookshelf, actually. Control your mind, control your future. Great quote thinking about how your thinking really affects your trading. And actually, I really recommend his book, Best Loser Wins, but... Just from a perspective of discipline today, which we're going to be talking about, you know, you can control how you act. And, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to cover some of the habits that 
I think some of the, the best traders do, some of the things that have helped me, some of the things I see others developing traders get over a hurdle, and some of the common pitfalls I think people fall into. It's going to be very tactical, going to give you a lot of insights I think that you can take away. I don't think, I know you can take away and use to help you with your trading. So if you have any questions, there's a Q&A box somewhere. You can stick them in there and hopefully we'll get time to address those at the end of the day. So a quick reminder, um, I have a couple of decades experience trading, but I don't have all the answers. I don't stand up here and say, hey, listen to me. I know everything. I absolutely don't. But you know, markers have been kind to me over the years, and I will share with you what's worked for me. But I also will be able to share with you observations I see with other traders. So I get to work with developing traders. I get obviously I'm in contact with experienced traders, some traders who are you know even more have extra couple of decades on than me, and I can kind of have good insights into what works and what doesn't. So my objective is to share with you those key ideas and thoughts. Um, I think I'm pretty well placed to do that because of the nature of working with other traders and my experience. And I, I can kind of say, well, I think this works, that doesn't, and position those for you. And you then get to get the filtered information that's hopefully going to be valuable to you. But I'm not here to say, you must do this and you must do that. Absolutely not. And anyway, I think anyone who says that really, you've got to be take it with a pinch of salt. Always do your analysis, research, homework. Uh, things take time. And I know I say this every week, but they do. And I see a lot of traders falling into the trap of and hold up my hands, done this myself. You want to make a change. You make a change. It doesn't work. You go, that doesn't bloody work. I'm going to do something else. And then, you know, the end of the day two of that, you end up pivoting off into some other random direction. If you're going to make a change to your trading, if you're going to have, if you find something today that's valuable to you, there's an actionable step or tactic you want to take away to utilize, then and you like it, it resonates with you, do some analysis on it, decide where you're going to do it, and then make the change and stick to it for a bit. Observe the results that that has over time and then make course corrections. You know, we're human beings, right? We're fallible to the instant I want it now. I even find myself doing that sometimes. I'm on Amazon and I'll, I'll be old or something. I'm like, what do you mean it's not coming by this evening? It's the morning. I want it by this evening. You know, if, if we just fall into that trap. We're so used to getting stuff next day, a couple of days. Like, why is it not coming to the same day? <laughs> and you think, hang on, the logistics of getting that here is quite challenging. Anyway, same with trading. Just be very mindful. Things do take time. So observe the results, make some course corrections, have an, a plan of how long you're going to put that uh, change in place for and when you're going to adjust and adapt. Okay, so is this you? Let me just double check everything. Okay, good. Um, is this you? Not sticking to the plan? Breaking your rules? Not sticking to your word? If it is, we've got 40 minutes to fix that today, or at least get you on the right track. I mean, it'd be a bit of a bold promise to say we're going to fix your discipline in one 40-minute webinar, but Hey, listen, this is something that is so, so common for many traders. There's a few traders out there who are super disciplined and it works well for them. They're like they're very, very disciplined, but actually a lot of those traders who are very disciplined struggle with the the nuance and the judgment and the discretionary side of trading um, because they're so so rigid and forced. So there's not always a panacea, but you you kind of want to have a, a very disciplined approach to trading and you kind of want to... The trouble is when you're breaking rules, you're not sticking to your plan, um, you're not giving yourself the opportunity to grow and you will never, ever break out of the level you're at now because if you don't stick to the plan, how can you how can you go back and order this and say it worked? How can you look at your performance and results and say, well, I need to make this adjustment? Because if you're making so many decisions on the fly and you're making you know, rash decisions, you're breaking rules when you've been down for three trades in a row and you end up FOMOing to trade four or your equity curve is stagnating, so you force that trade to trade. You know, if you're starting to do that, then it's 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 kind of never going to work for you because you'll always be in this vicious cycle. So I'm going to attempt to kind of give you some actionable ideas today. So a sort of background here, and I I don't do this so much because I don't think it's so relevant. I kind of um feel like it's more it's better for for you to say well, what can you what can you take from this as opposed to what I've done or what I am. But this is valuable, I think. Um, because it's a really big thing for me, discipline. It was my biggest, biggest stumbling block. In the early 2000s, when I started trading, I had a super great short-term edge. I was trading shares on the London Stock Exchange, um, and the algos then were pretty dumb. Like, I, And I've, I think I've told a story about this before, but I'd kind of learned to spot these algos. You know, they were just starting to get going, and London Stock Exchange was always a bit behind the the, the American guys. Online stuff was 
I don't know if you remember, if you're around then, but you'd kind of type in, hey, I want to, or you click a button that said buy FTSE, and that would send an automated message. I want to buy FTSE, and it come back with, or I want a quote from FTSE, you never reveal your your direction. It would come back with a quote that was 15 points wide on a day that maybe did 60 points. Um, so it's very challenging. But anyway, it was, I, spot, I had an edge, and it worked very, very well. But my discipline sucked. Like I was very good at spotting these algos at the open that were moving price up and down the level two screen. And in those days, they're easier to spot, blah, blah, blah. And I would do well in the morning. And I'd do really, really well when they're active. But then I kind of sit there at lunchtime, and I'd second-guess moves. I'd deviate from my plan. I'd trade too much size. I was a kind of sucker for kind of piling into things I believe was the right trade. And it was a mess, right? It was a mess. And even though I had this edge that actually, if I could just focus on that and stayed on that pathway, it would have accelerated my learning massively. I ended up spinning my wheels a lot, ended up giving a lot back, having great runs and giving it back. And it was all down to discipline. It was the one thing. And I knew that I had to have that sorted and have it fixed straight away. So, you know, that's you, that's okay, right? Because it it, it can be fixed. It's the answer to a lot of things if you have an edge if you have a good strategy right and, and those are things that are relatively i don't say easy but there are you can get those with screen time you probably have edge or you have you know a slither of edge that you can build on a foundation of edge you've got a good strategy maybe you've seen others trading specific strategies maybe you've built a strategy yourself that you know has efficacy you know has a positive expectancy but the only thing standing in the way between you and the results you want is you that's good and bad. And I think it errs more on the good. Now, it's bad because you're not where you want to be. Fine. But when are we ever as humans, right? And you and I are ambitious people. We want to move forward. We want the next step, the next level. And, you know, sometimes tolling in your mind between being happy and grateful for where you are versus wanting to drive forward is a difficult balance. We all have to go through that balance. But if the only thing, you know, if you have the strategy, you have edge, then the good news is it's you that's standing in the way so you can control it. Personal responsibility and all that. You know, I'm a huge fan of, of, of taking responsibility and autonomy for your actions, whatever it is, whether you're in health and finance, whatever it might be, right? And this is one of the perfect examples. You can look yourself in the mirror and go, it's my fault that I am here where I am now, but it's also me who can get myself out of it. And that's powerful, right? You know, you see a lot of people who are blaming others for their misfortune, and I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole, but, oh, it's it's the government's fault, it's the rich man's fault, it's that person's fault, it's that person's fault, you know, and, and they push away the responsibility elsewhere. The beautiful thing about trading is that it's you. And if it's discipline that's the challenge for you, then you have the opportunity to fix it. And it's not going to be a quick fix. I wish I could give you something you could go, oh, there's a discipline pill. Oh, I'm perfectly disciplined. It's going to take some time. But there are ways of accelerating that and there are tactics and ways that, you know, which we'll share in a bit, which hopefully you'll grab a couple of them and say, actually, yeah, I will deploy that. I will try that. Okay, so easier said than done. You've probably tried both the carrot and the stick. And what I mean by that is you've probably said, if you don't do this, I will be really mad. And if you do do this, I will be really happy. <laughs> really not great carrot and sticks, but you get the idea, right? You can kind of use both. And we we're more than likely, I know that you're more guilty of the carrot, of the stick side than the carrot, right? So you're probably like, why can't I stick to my rules? I can't believe it. You know, I didn't do this. I, I broke this. I didn't do that. I said I was going to do this. I said I was going to do that. And you get angry and frustrated. Naturally, going off piece very slightly here, you would never talk to an employee like that. And I always think this, like if I was employing four or five traders who trade my money. And I said, right, you get half a million quid, you get a couple of hundred grand, you get this, and you're distributing out capital to the traders. And one of them made a mistake. There is no way I would bring him into the office and go, you silly idiot, I can't believe you did that. Very, 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 very unlikely, unless it was something that I thought he was maybe negligent with. If he made an error, didn't take a trade, missed something, you'd be like, listen, pal, it happens. You're a human being. Just write it up, learn from it, and try to make sure that it doesn't happen again or that the occurrences are reduced over time. Because you know that if you reduce these, then your p is going to improve and the company's p is going to improve. So I always think of it like that. Like you, and maybe you run a business, maybe you have employees, maybe you have people underneath you if you're in um, you know, a company. You know, you would talk, you talk to them, hopefully you do. You don't knock them out for making a slight mistake. But try and talk to yourself like that and try and talk to yourself with a little bit more um 
compassion because most of us are drive, 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 tough, tough, go, go, go. And sometimes you have to back off the throttle a little bit. That's not going to affect your drive and ambition, but it's just going to help you feel comfortable with still making errors, but still moving in the right direction. So you probably try both carrot stick. And you don't understand why you can't stick to your rules because you're probably trying the same thing again. So let's flip the switch today. So first of all, I want you to think about in your mind, you know, what your trading plan is. Maybe you've got it in front of you now. Maybe you're trading at the moment. You have been trading the past few hours or this morning, whatever it is. You've got it to handle. You can think about it. Um, you must have total clarity in it. You cannot be second guessing in the heat of the moment. What I mean by this is you can't leave anything up to chance. Now, I'm not saying um, turn yourself into a robot because you're not a very good robot because you need to sleep. You need to use the toilet. You need to have food. You get moody from time to time. You will make errors. We are pretty crap robots, right? And if you want to build now, go and create a robot. That's fine. That's something different. That's another topic. And absolutely go to that path if that suits you. So we're not trying to create a robot, but we also don't want to be giving ourselves so much um things to think about in the heat at the moment. What's my position size going to be? Um, should I be trading long or short here? Should I wait for the counter to close? Um, where am I going to take the trade? Um, where's my stock going to be? Where's where's my target? You know, am I going to run this? Am I going to add to this? There shouldn't even be things to think about. You know, part of your plan should be, hey, I know what I'm going to do. Right? A really stupid example here of let's say you're waiting for an extension away from VWAP and you kind of find some support and you buy that first ignition trigger. I don't know why I thought that. Maybe I was maybe I was watching it at that point in time when I wrote this slide. You know that would be a plan that you go, hey, that's what I'm going to do, and then you do it. Right? There's no thinking about, oh, how far away from the view app is far away. What's the ignition bar look like? Yes, there's some discretion there, of course, and I, I think that if you're so so cramped with rules, it's very difficult to operate as a as a, as a trader, as a discretionary trader. And that's one of the beauties about being a human being. You can have discretion, you can have judgment, you can use the experience you've got in the markets and the screen time to influence your decisions in a positive manner. But you've got to be careful that your chimp brain isn't steering you wrong. And I say the chimp brain on the book, uh, Chimp Paradox by... <laughs> It'll come to me. Someone might might remind me. Stevens, is it Stevens? Anyway, Chimp Paradox, you'll find it if you're interested in that. And he talks about the chimp brain kind of hijacks a lot of the decisions. Um, and, you know, even great psychologist Steve Ward says all this type of stuff all the time and, you know, frames it very much more articulate manner than I do. But you know, there's, there's a time when that little voice is steering you wrong. It's driven by emotion. It's saying, hmm, you know what, mate? You've lost your last five trades. You need to get you need to get a green trade. You should probably jump on this. You're going to miss that rally. That's the chimp telling you, "Hey, you need to get on now." That's emotion. That's not logic. That's not a setup. So if you don't have clarity in your trading plan, then you're always going to open the chimp up to making the decision for you. And as soon as that chimp makes the decision for you, you're stuffed. You're completely stuffed. And even the scientists have put like brains in brains attached to humans. Hopefully, yeah, attached to humans in some sort of scanner, right? And they've said, okay, they've made they've made the people, uh, they've put them through a decision making process, and they've then created emotion, like they've shown them an image that's created emotion, whatever that might be, whether that's fear. I think it's concentrate on fear, like you know that kind of emotion, some frustration, anger, and they've noted and they've asked them to make decisions again, and they noticed that actually different parts of the brain will make the same decision based on the emotion emotive state they're in. So as traders, that, that's not that's not good. Because if you're in any state of emotion, you're trading out of fear, you're trading out of frustration, you're trading out any of those things, you're going to use a different part of your brain. If it's a different part of your brain, the chimp brain, if you like, all that screen time and all that experience you've got counts for absolutely nothing because you're not even accessing that part in the filing system of the brain. So just try to take away as many of the on-fly, on-the-fly decisions as you can in a trading day without becoming a complete robot. That's a first port of call. If you're leaving too much up to chance, then it's very, very difficult to be disciplined. Someone's good. Professor Stephen Peters, thank you, gentlemen, ladies and gents, uh, in the Q&A there. Thank you. Yeah, Chimp Paradox by Professor Steve Peters. Great, great book. Okay, so clarity and um, a refined trading plan, I think, is super, super important. Okay, so the next thing is is, is building the confidence. You know, you have to have... Uh, confidence in in what you're doing and the old saying or the or the common saying is mark i, I can't have clarity and confidence because my in my plan because i have no results 
right? You can have clarity because you know what you're doing, fine, but I can't have confidence because I don't have any results to look from. And it's okay for you know you experienced guys who have been in the markets for a while because you can look back and even if you're going through a rough patch, go actually, you know, I've always recovered from rough patches before, drawdowns, you know, I have always recovered. I can do this well. Um, I, I know, and I, I'm not too bothered about this. And then it's easier to keep that confidence high. And I get that, I understand that. And if you have no results to look at the logic brain or the chimp goes, well, why have you to be confident about? Who are you to talk? You don't have any results. Look at the state of equity curve. You couldn't do worse if you try. You might as well go and start flipping burgers in McDonald's. What are you playing at? You know the, you know the score, right? The chimp goes on and on and on and on. You're not this, not this. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment of how to kind of rewire that. But there are no shortcuts. You kind of just have to take the leap of faith, build a plan based on principles you know are effective, your risk management, your strategies, when you're going to get involved, how are you going to add to trades, are you going to peel, how are you going to operate, generally your operational plan, and stick to it. And it's the only way because if you second guess stuff, you can't, you know it's got a negative expectancy. So to build confidence in your process, build confidence in the way that you act as a trader and the way you conduct yourself as a trader that's how you build confidence because then you can start associating yourself with the the, the the kind of approach to I don't want to use the word professional here because um you know it has connotations in the CFD and spread betting world um but someone who is 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 very serious about their trading right they are very um you know committed they are uh, you know very very seasoned and they take the trading very very seriously okay so this is now where we come into our routines, habits, and standards. And this is a very, very important time. If you've drifted off at the beginning, I I urge you to come back and, and grab your attention for a moment here. Um, let's grab your attention for the whole of it because I think it's all valuable. But if you have drifted off, this is this is something that I think is going to really help you. So daily routine, and I, listen, honestly, I don't see many people talking about this. Um, because it's something that I think you have to have been through and you have to have grabbed from other parts of society, the sports world. A lot of this stuff comes from the business world um, and bring it into your own world, the trading world. So daily routines, habits, and standards. You've got to make a decision and make, make the decision from today. I am a disciplined trader in person. Now, now, I get it, right? The whole stand in front of the mirror thing, I'm a disciplined trader. I'm a wealthy trader. I'm a skinny person. I'm a. It doesn't work if you you can't kid yourself if you're not right. I don't buy that, and I don't think you do too. And you know, there's a certain affirmations to a certain extent work well, but I'm going to show you how to supercharge them, how they really work, and how that kind of world I, I believe works. I'm not again. Okay, I'm not an expert in it, but in my little lane of where I've applied it, it it's been pretty good. So you know. You have to make the decision of who you're going to be, right? And immediately, like, well, you're not, are you? You know, are you? You kind of broke your rules today, so you're lying. I'm a disciplined trader. Yeah, but you, you chased that deal today. You kind of you added to the position when you said you wouldn't. You didn't add to the position when you said you wouldn't. You close. You can't kid yourself, right? So we're going to have to build that up, right? And this is how we kind of build all the pillars we need to create your mindset into a disciplined trader. So. Think of this first. So make the decision that you're going to be a disciplined trader. Right? Just make the decision. I'm not trying to kid ourselves. Just make the decision. Okay. It doesn't mean you're not going to make mistakes. You are going to make mistakes. You're human. And traders are going to make you're going to make mistakes forever. So accept that. You know, and I even you even see hedge fund managers managing billions, right? Making mistakes. And they go, oh, I made a massive mistake on that. I went into a trade I shouldn't have done. It cost us a couple of billion, blah, blah, blah. Well, we live to fight another day. The next next month or next year, sorry, they put up a 40% year. It has going to happen. So accept that you're never going to be perfect, but that's okay. You don't need to be. But what it does mean is that your discipline, your sorry, your your routines and habits are ones that you would associate with discipline. Okay, this is how you start to build the identity of a disciplined man, disciplined woman, disciplined trader. Okay, so a moment. I'd like to spend a moment on this slide. I talk about this a lot, and some people. Some people love it. Some people go, oh, God, eye rolling. Um, I think if, unless you try it, unless you've tried it, you don't know how effective this can be. And it's free. It's free. It takes such a little amount of time. So if we now, if we go back to the last slide, you're trying to now create the identity of a disciplined trader because that's what you need 
to become a disciplined trader is to create the identity. So we're going to try to build that up now. You can't just say it and then next day break your rules. You have to, we kind of, we're going to go through the process of our daily habits, our daily routines, and we're trying to reprogram our run. And like I say, you know, this is Steve Ward's territory, Brett Steenbarger's territory, um, some of the great trading psychologists out there, they are going to this in, in mega depth, right? So I look at this from a, through the lens of a trader, you know, operating in the trenches and taking some of the best ideas from these guys and some of the best ideas from the sports world and some of the best ideas from business world, some of these high performance, super, super wealthy men uh, and women who have kind of come up with these with these concepts. And, and they work, they work, they work well. You've just got to stick to it. So visualization, if you can think about your biggest weakness, okay? And I will um, use an example, right? Let's say you uh, are often chasing a trade that's not part of your plan. You see the market go bid, you see the momentum coming in, and you can't help but buy that because you think you're going to get a quick scalp off it. And it's not part of your plan. It often ends in you buying the high and rocking back. You haven't structured the trade. You end up getting you haven't got to stop properly in there and it ends up being a mess, right? You hate yourself for doing it. It doesn't really work. It's not part of your plan. And let's imagine that's one of your biggest weaknesses. It could be anything. It could be anything. Not pulling the trigger, adding too much size, not trading enough size, not adding to a trade, adding to trade when you see it wouldn't. Could be any of these things, right? So identify that. And then the way to kind of conduct visualization uh, that I found to be d decent is to imagine yourself in that situation, right? With the attached emotions, and I like to add some physical stuff into it as well. So I like to hold my mouse, right? The mouse that you use to trade with, make sure it's turned off. And I've talked about this before, but, you know, make sure you've disconnected it and your machine's off. But you want to close your eyes and imagine yourself in that situation. So the chart suddenly rips off the highs, you know, and you see it and you go, oh, I want to get on that because I can just ride that wave for a minute or so and get a bit of cash out of the market. And, you know, it's going to make me feel good. I'm going to get a big dopamine hit. And I'm going to have a little green trade and I'm going to feel good. And I'll, yeah, yeah, you know. And, and feel that, right? Feel that. See it. So see the chart and exactly the colors that you use, the same thing, the same screens you have. Have it all there. Have it vivid. See that market go bid in that example and feel that urge to just take a trade. Just quickly jump on that for a few ticks. Just feel that urge, right? And, and really, really amplify that so that you can kind of get yourself in that moment. Now, when you feel that attached emotion of, oh, I want to grab this. I want to get, a, it's, it's easy money. This, I just want to get a few ticks. I'll feel great. This is great. It's going to be quick. Now imagine how you actually want to act. So if you're trying to stop yourself from chasing markets in this example that I kind of got a, a little bit of ignition, then the way you want to act is, is this part of my plan? No, it's not. I wait for pullbacks on these type of trades, or I wait for it to come back and retest and I short the lows or whatever it might be or I don't even get involved in this sort of stuff. And imagine how you want to act, and then you rehearse that in your mind. So you see the actual thing that normally triggers you. The market goes bid, rips off. Oh, I'm going to get on that. Yeah, it's easy. I'm going to go. And you're going to know, that's not part of my plan. Let me push my chair back, put my mouse down, slide my chair back a little bit, have a look at the situation, assess the plan. If that's how you want to act, do rehearse that in your mind, and then feel how it feels to be disciplined, right? Because sometimes in the short term, it's a very, very tough thing to do. Like a lot of things in life, the short-term pain gives you long-term gain. You know, a lot of people are taking these short-term gains, short-term gains, that feels good, feels good, feels good, feels good in the short term. And long term, you know, things are in the in the in the in the drain, right? You think about someone who's constantly eating food, great, feels good, oh, tasty, 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 and the health's not on point. Uh, someone who's gambling, someone who's in, in the trading world, we can do all this, uh, you know, as many things like this. So how does it feel to, to, how does it feel when you get that feeling of discipline? Like it wants the initial, oh, the urge to do it wears off when you kind of sit back and go, you know what? I feel good. I stuck to my plan. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to stick to my plan. I'm trying not to chase these markets that suddenly go bid and, and me get sucked into it. Yeah, it feels good. And you rehearse that and you rehearse that and you rehearse that as often as you want. And it's it, it doesn't take long, right? And again, you can use props as well, but just making sure you have it in your mind and you feel the emotional attachment to it. That's the key because you want to rehearse how you feel at the end of it. Because the thing is, when you're in the heat of the moment, what happens is this, is that you don't think there's going to be any gain from this. 
your brain just goes, I want to take a trade because why are you stopping me from making money? I can't believe you're stopping. Yeah, but it, it is very hard to kind of bring them off the ledge and go, hey, listen, 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 just relax. Trust me that where we're headed is far better than a short-term gain here. Bear with me on this. We've got some work to do. And it's kind of talking that, going through that in your mind. So you repeat that in your mind as often as you like. Now, something that... um I've learned is that if you can really kind of make it big and bright in your mind and really feel it, for me, it's the feeling, right? Some people say it's the brightness of the image and fine, try that. Try making it bigger. Try making it brighter. Some people say that you take the, you freeze the image, you freeze the chart in midair, as it were, and flip it around and look at the back of it. Look at, look at the image. If you like, I know, okay, in this, in this context, we're looking at a chart, but it might be you looking above yourself from a kind of bird's eye view, seeing your trading station, seeing you sitting there and freezing that and then saying, right, how, and, and kind of pausing the movie in your mind and saying, what's the emotion there and kind of dragging stuff out, flipping it round, kind of really analyzing it, making it vivid, you know, making it really, really bright. So it hurts your eyes almost and pulling it back. And some people say that's really, really effective, right? And it's up to you. You find what works for you. The other is to magnify that emotion, like, oh, the pain of, you know, not taking the pain of this, the pain of, you know, regret when I take it and get stopped out or you know, whatever it is. But you find your own sort of edge for that. But the, the, the trick with this is just to get the reps in because the problem we have is that, you know, unlike, say, basketball, where you're kind of practicing the free throws or football, where you're practicing your penalties or free kicks or whatever it might be, you can practice them to your heart's content. Bang, 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 bang. And yeah, there's undoubtedly more pressure in a match environment, of course, you know, a cup final or something where it's like, there's, there's, there's two minutes left of extra time and, you know, you're, you're, you're down by one goal and you've got a free kick just outside the box that, you know, there's a lot of pressure there. I get it, right? It's different. But you, you can practice the reps. In trading, you want to be able to get the repetitions in without always having the money on the line, right? You want to be able to replicate that training ground and by all means, run through your replays, run through your stuff and actually do it physically and go through the charts and kind of go through replays or kind of move your chart along, whatever you want to do, or even do it old school style where you've got a bit of paper and you're kind of moving the chart along and you're thinking about, why. Well, fine, do that, but also do it in your mind as well because that allows your mind to think, ah, this is how he wants me to act. So then in the heat of the moment, when you see the market go bid and you normally chase that damn thing, there's a split second where you go, wait, 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 wait. we practiced doing this. Our real objective here is to put the mouse down and step back from the screen. And all of a sudden you do that, and that is the split second you need not to do the thing you don't want to do, whatever that may be. In that example, it was chasing that high bid or that ignition, right? And, and if you do that, then you can just get so many repetitions in. And for the biggest impact, I found the benefit of this would do it when your state has changed. And what I mean by that is if you can do it when you're physically in a different state. For me, it's I've had a heavy session at the gym. I come out, I sit in the sauna, and there I often do the visualization because I, my state has changed. Uh, I'm already pumped from doing my gym workout. Um, I'm now in a heated environment and, and it's something, it's something about that change of state. You could try it if you're a cold plunger, if you're in the cold plunge, try and do it. Sometimes it's difficult to come. If you calm yourself, your mind down and think about it, there's something about doing it when your state has changed during a walk, even if you don't want to have to be extreme, but just thinking about when your state has changed is a very good way of, of doing it. I don't know the science behind it. I'm sure somebody, um, you know, far more into this and I, I am a mere trader who's trying to grab this and use it uh, to get more advantage in the markets. But there's something about doing it when your state has changed. So anyway, that's my my, my my kind of approach to visualization and something. And there's no reason not to, right? If you don't do this, you're either... Um, there's no reason not to, is there? That's all I can say. It takes five minutes. And you can do five minutes of time that you can spend once a day doing it for a week and see what happens. And if you get nothing from it, you go, I've wasted... 25 minutes over the five days. Well, big wow. You know, you can waste 25 minutes scrolling through bloody some sort of social media. Whereas this can have a massive ROI. You could do this and say, you know, I'm going to do it for a week. I'm going to do it for two weeks. I'm going to come in and say, you know what, I'm going to spend some time on it. And I'm going to see what happens. And if it works, what a massive ROI you've got. If it doesn't work, what have you lost? The risk of water ratio in this trade is, is humongous. And I think that the probability of success, success is pretty high as well. So you may be listening to this going, uh, 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 but I urge you to try it. You know, put this, uh, we're cynical, right? We're traders, we should be, but it's worth a shot. It's worth a shot.
All right. So tools and tactics. Let's talk about making life a little bit easier for yourself. Um, if you were losing weight, if you were trying to stop smoking, the last thing you would do is if you're losing weight would be to sit there in front of a big chocolate cake. The last thing you would do if you were stopping smoking is to sit there in front of a pack of cigarettes. The last thing you do if you were trying to stop drinking would be to go down the pub and sit at the bar. Very, very difficult. Now, at some point, you can do that. Absolutely fine. You become absolutely seasoned to it. You're like, hey, it's just, my identity shifted. And we're trying to get your identity shifted to one of a disciplined trader. So make life easy for yourself by taking yourself away from situations where you are seduced into breaking your rules. In other words, if you're trying to avoid overtrading, then why sit in front of the screens at lunchtime when it's choppy? You're just tempting yourself and you can be strong, 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 strong and slip up once and then it's game over. So take take the stuff away from you. You know, Move yourself out of the situation. If you're closing trades too early that you're in, get yourself away from the screens then. Just do stuff to help improve your odds of success because this should be your sole target because you're in a situation now, many of you are, and maybe speaking to you, is that you have edge, you have strategy from the first slide, but you're stopping yourself getting the results you want. So this should be your absolute primary focus, not messing about trying to get better strategies or trying to do this or fine tune that, because it's pointless if you can't stick to the rules. So this should be your ultimate focus. So do everything you possibly can to make life easier to get to that goal. There's no need to play the game on hard mode Play on easy mode. The goal is the same, but don't have to sit there eyeballing the chart, watching every tick, and it must be disciplined, must be disciplined, must be disciplined. You know, no need. Shut your screen down, go away, come back when there's going to be some action. Set some alerts, come back at the US session open, whatever you want to do. So how can you operationally change the way you trade to improve your discipline? And how do you even define being disciplined? Help yourself out by saying, what does it mean to you? And it might be that one thing of, I've just got a little chink in the armor if I just revenge trade or just FOMO into trades or whatever it is. If you can define it and then come up with operational ways to limit your exposure to that, then great. Here's an example. You know, I know that after a string of losing trades, I'm I'm okay, but it can start to make me trade differently. Not nowhere near as bad as it would have been years ago, but I'm just aware of it, right? I'm a human being. I know that after a stream, I'm like, mm, am I in the wrong conditions? Am I pushing stuff a bit hard? I start to second guess slightly, right? So I now know that after a, a string of losing trades, I need to step out of the situation, especially intraday. If they've been in a close cluster, trying to get on something, push a little bit too hard. I know I need to step away because whilst it probably will be okay, I do know that's when the door can open a jar and it might end up with me doing something that I later regret. I might make a big mistake. And I don't want to do that. So I don't put myself in that situation. So operationally, just another example, you know, you might say after a string of losers, I pull myself out of the situation. Or after you've had a couple of losing days in a row, let's say just a couple, maybe enough to make you think differently about trading, you maybe step out of the next day and take a break. Now, that's up to you. You might be fine with that, but it's knowing what pushes your buttons and then how you avoid that tactically, how you stop yourself getting in that situation. And that's really, 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 really key. Okay, so now we go back to um, resetting your identity. So identity is something that we're all, we all have, and I believe we can create new identities for ourselves. And sometimes they serve us, sometimes they don't, right? You've all had the, the mate who fancies himself as a bit of a hard guy, you know, maybe you know, you're at a bar or whatever, and not, not me nowadays, but there's always, you think about when in my 20s, there's always a guy who thought himself was a bit of a hard nut. He'd be going around and that was his identity. So anyone who slightly brushed past him, what are you looking at? And it's just dangerous. You're like, oh God, he's at it again. He's about to kick off again. You know, and think about some of your fit friends, a fit as in healthy friends. Um, you know, How do they act around food, right? They look at it as fuel. You know, if, if someone's saying, oh, do you fancy, uh, you know, having a kebab? Do you fancy having a, a slice of cake? Do you fancy? They're like, no, 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 I don't have that. It's just who they are, right? They don't eat. They just don't eat that sort of food. Their identity is different. And and that's the, that works the other way as well, right? You see friends who are perhaps overweight and they are all about food. Their identity is, I always finish what's on my plate. 
you know, I always say, uh, yeah, no, I never turn down a fr I never turn down a meal or uh, yeah, when I go out, I always have, uh, you know, five pints before I even start. The you, you know, the thing I'm, I'm kind of saying in jest a little bit, but there's characters out there that their identity is in these different camps and you want to put your identity in a camp that serves you. Right. So your identity needs to be in the camp of I'm a disciplined trader because it's so much easier to be disciplined when you identify as a disciplined trader. Look at those examples of the fit guy and the and the overweight guy. Their identity is, is of that. And they act that out. It's it's the default setting. Default setting is the guy says, "Yeah, I, I go for a, a run every morning. Um, you know, I go to the gym and you know I eat healthily. That's just who I am. It doesn't become hard for them. It's not a challenge. Same as the overweight guy, right? He's like, yeah, well, I always have a full English. I always do. You see how that affects you as well in trading. And so your identity needs to shift to one of your disciplined trader, right? And it's not an easy shift. It's not a simple thing. Just like if one of those two wanted to have to go the other way, um, very difficult. Well, not very difficult, not easy is a better way. It's not difficult. It's not difficult if you go down the right path. It sometimes takes more time than you'd like, but what doesn't? Right? What doesn't? So changing your identity to one of a disciplined trader is key. So to do this, this is the, the steps that I think are valuable. So you need to start cultivating the right thoughts and actions. Okay. As I said earlier, you can't, I don't think you can kid yourself. You can't just say, I'm a disciplined trader, I'm a disciplined trader, just like you can't if you're carrying a few extra pounds, say, I'm in the shape I want to be. I look great in front of a mirror. Mm. You know, you're there. You're like, I'm not, man. I could, you know, I could just do a kind of this body fat. You can't kid yourself, right? You cannot kid yourself. You've got to own it, right? You've got to own it and live with it. And that's the same thing with discipline, right? You have to start having a combination of your thoughts and actions. So start, to, to the way to kind of do this, I think, as a fast track is, if you identify as a disciplined man, disciplined woman, you start to do things outside of trading to build the discipline muscle. Okay. And this is, this is important. This is a real, I think a real kind of uh, fast track, if you like, to build the discipline muscle, you start to do stuff outside of trading because trading is a very emotive environment. There's money on the line. It's important to you. You want it bad. There's a lot attached to it. So making that right decision in the right moment with the limited amount of time you've got when there's money on the line and the and the impact it has on where you want to be in your dream, your goal, there's a lot riding the damn thing, right? It's, not, it's a lot. So build the muscle in other areas in an easy manner, right? Because if you think something and you do it, that's when you start to identify as that person, right? So if you're behaving like a disciplined person and you're thinking like one, you start to become and believe you are one. And if you're that starts outside of trading, start to do some examples in a moment, you start to become disciplined and you start to be focused. I'm not saying be boring and be like, you know, Mr. Never do anything. I'm not saying that. Hopefully you understand the difference, right? But it's if, if you can start to cultivate that discipline, then in the heat of the moment in trading, it becomes much so much easier to be disciplined. It becomes so much easier. So some tactics, right? Some tactics. Gym, going to the gym on a consistent basis. If that's something you don't already do, if you don't already do it, then you've already built the muscle, right? Do something else. Something in your diet. Are you you're sticking to some macros? Are you cutting out carbs? Are you uh, adding something in? Yeah, I'd go everything, right? I'm a fitness expert. You know, my, my own fitness journeys are up and down as well. Sometimes I'm very, very disciplined and on point. I think great. Sometimes I'm not so good. You are human beings. It's going to be like that. It's normal. Cold exposure, cold showers, cold plunge. Is that difficult for you? Discipline, discipline, discipline. Something I've done religiously for so many years now that it kind of lost its impact in a way. And there's a health benefit, of course, but the discipline of having to go in there and turn that shower onto cold or having to go in the cold plunge, you don't want to do it, but you said you're going to do it, so you're going to do it. That just has a massive benefit on your trading discipline. Maybe you're not very good at reading. You want to sit and kind of read a bit more. Talking to strangers, I've, something some people struggle to do that. And it's like have the discipline to go up and start start a conversation with someone at the corner shop, right? Whatever it is, it's doing something uncomfortable, but you say you're going to do it and you stick to it. And that's the key, right? Because what happens is this, and this, again, this is about creating the identity of a disciplined trader. And if you can start to build the muscle, it becomes easier to do the thing you're trying to do, which is going to give you the ROI, which is a disciplined trader. So if you can discipline outside of trading as well in certain arenas or do something that builds your confidence, you start to identify as a disciplined person. Then you go, well, I'm disciplined there. Of course, I can be disciplined in trading. It becomes easier to kind of parallel it in and fold it in and, and, and make the progress you want there. So this is something that's really important, really important, this one. 
and it happens a lot in trading. So pay attention to your thoughts. Okay. And what I mean by this is very often in trading, we say something like, I'm going to do that. I, I'm, I'm going to buy that high or um, I, I'm, I'm not going to buy the low or I'm going to um, not, I might not trade today. Um, you know, a little bit tired, you know, I, I'll make sure I'm going to do this. What you need to, what, what's important here is that you stop and you grab the thoughts before it just drifts off. And so what I mean by this is, is, is this. So imagine, oh, I might not trade today, right? Oh, I feel a bit tired. I might not trade today. You say it, off it goes. Never you know, think about it again. But you think about it again if you have a red day. You go, damn, I knew I shouldn't have traded today. I said I was, I said I was tired, right? But the trick here is not to might do, I'm going to do, is to make sure your word has meaning. Right, make sure your word has meaning, and I think this is you do this in life as well. You know, well, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to do that. Stop, grab the thought, and say, what are the consequences of this? If I say I'm going to do that, then I really am going to do that, and so I need to make damn sure that if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to follow through with it, right? Or I'm not going to do that. Oh, I'm not going to eat chocolate now for the rest of the year. Fine. Ah, blah 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 blah. Bring it back. Don't just say it because you, if you just next week you go and fancy a bar of chocolate, you eat it, you're just going to be another thing that erodes the discipline, right? Erodes the confidence that you do what you'll say you're going to do. And this all has an impact on how you trade, by the way. You grab it and go, oh, hang on a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. So why do I? Why am I saying that? I'm thinking that because maybe I want to lose a few pounds of body fat. Okay, is that really? Am I really going to do that? And you might be like, actually, no. You know what? That's not necessary. I'll set down a whim. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go two weeks without that. I'll do this. And then you stick to that. That's far more powerful than just putting those words out in a whim. I'm going to do that. I'm going to gym every day. I'm not going to drink anymore. I'm going to do this. I might I might trade today. I'll make sure I add to my trades. And then you don't do it. Just make sure when you say it, you do it with meaning. And then that becomes such a weapon. Because if you say you're going to add to a trade, right, and you don't do it, you kind of, yeah, I'm always saying that. Your brain doesn't believe you anymore. But if you stop it and go, I am going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make sure I do that on my next trade. Because then you're actually focused and your word has meaning to yourself. And so things like, I'm going to stick to my rules. You know, I'm going to make sure that I, um, you know, don't, don't take a trade out on the first target or hold a trade or whatever it might be, right? I can go for any of these permutations. You know, that thought that comes in for most people just drifts off. I might do this. I might do that. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm never going to be there. But just grab it. And then your word has so much impact. You can use it as a weapon because then you get to a point where it takes some time. I agree. But you get to a point there where when you say something, it has so much meaning to it. To yourself, this is. And others as well. Fine. And there's a benefit of having that. But to yourself, if you say you're going to do something, you know you're going to do it then it has impact. And the thing is, you never say you're going to do something unless you know you can do it. So you won't say, oh, I'm going to make sure I made 100 grand next week because you can't control that. But you say, I make, I am going to stick to my trading plan today and tomorrow and the day after. Or I am going to do my pre-market preparation before each day. Or I am going to make sure I do. You can do that and you can follow through and say, yeah, I am doing that. And so you won't just put these thoughts out on a whim that really don't serve you because you just don't believe it. And this is cultivating yourself as, again, the, or creating the identity of a disciplined trader, a disciplined person. Very, very important that. Um, and also, you know, when your thoughts and actions combine – Right. If you say you're going to do something and you believe you're a disciplined trader and you visualize yourself as a disciplined trader and you start to do stuff that align with what you'd expect a disciplined trader to do, all of a sudden, boom, and it really has an impact. Right. You start to do your pre market prep, you start to do journaling, you find that it becomes easier to stick to your trading plan. You know, you're saying you're doing a visualization. You know, over time, you start to now believe that you are a disciplined trader because you are, you're proving it. Your thoughts and actions are combining. You're not just standing in front of the mirror going, I'm a disciplined trader, disciplined trader. You're actually taking the steps to becoming it so that when you say it, it automatically goes, what have I got to support this? What have I got to support this evidence? It goes for your brain. It goes, ah, oh, yeah, well, actually, you had a week where you did all your pre-market prep. You wrote up all your trades. You stuck to your risk management. Okay, right. So you maybe you're still making some errors and maybe you're still slipping up from time to time in the trading day. You're a human being, but actually you're now building the identity of a disciplined trader. And that's something that cannot be taken away from you because it's you. 
you just like you might have identity now of whatever I, I solve people's problems for them. You know, everyone, everyone comes to me to solve the problems or, you know, I'm very good at, at fixing stuff. I'm very practical. I'm very handy or whatever it might be. I run great at football or I'm a fast drive or whatever it might be. Right. You've got identity already that kind of serves you. Maybe it doesn't in some instances, but it's very difficult to, to unwire that. So trading you, to build that identity is so, so valuable for you trading now and for the future. Now a comment here on, on dabbling and meddling with this, right? It's a challenging skill to, uh, challenging skill to master. Uh, and it's not going to be a straight path, right? You are always going to make mistakes, except that now that you're never going to be perfect. You're always going to make mistakes. The best of the best of the best make mistakes. We're human beings. We cannot expect ourselves to be 100% perfect, but you don't need to be, right? You don't need to be. And balancing that compression versus compassion Okay, I talk about this. I've talked about this before. Is you know, very often we're uh, beating ourselves up, compressing ourselves, and come on, do this. You must do this. Uh, why can't I stick to my rules? Uh, uh, anger, anger, fr frustration. Because that's the type of characters that come into trading. Anyway, driven, ambitious, all that stuff. Sometimes it's balancing a little bit, saying, "Listen, you made a mistake today. Um, it's okay. What can we learn from it? Let's unpack it a little bit. Was the situation avoidable?" Um, was it a mistake that actually you've not made a mistake for a while now? You slipped up today. Was there much damage? No, you caught it quickly. All right, that's fine. You know, there's no need to be stressing about it. You just use the right tool for the job. Balance the game of the force versus the pat on the back. Get the idea, right? Incremental improvement, one step at a time. And important to remember that one mistake doesn't mean you throw the whole of the discipline um, objective and goals and um, progress you've made so far under the bus. Analogy, let's go back to analogies. If you are trying to lose weight, right? If you stick to your macros during the during the say, trading day, during the day, and then in the evening, you have a slice of cake, you're like, ah, oh, I've gone over today. It doesn't mean you eat the whole damn cake. It means you go, you know what? I slipped up, right? I went into the fridge. I was a little bit bored. I da 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 da. I grabbed a slice of cake. It was sitting there. Someone's birthday. Oh, okay, I've gone over my macros today. That doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter in the scheme of things. But the important thing is to say, okay, that's an error. I don't have to eat the whole damn cake now and throw the whole thing under the bus and now just eat cake every day for the rest of the, my, of the month. Same with trading, right? One error, one slip up doesn't need to be that, that important. Um, and something, you know, just just as a, as a reference here, I had, I've got boxes and boxes of these trading journals. And something I noticed when I, I was ages and ages ago, was moving stuff around, I had written on one of these, printed this out, this, I'm going to butcher how he says, creator quo harvest et harvest. And it basically means believe you have it and you have it. Something like that. In fact, I can I, I double check the quote. Let me double check exactly the quote. It's, it's, it's basically that type of thing. Um, it's believe, yeah, believe that you have it and you do believe you have it and you do. And I think that's the same with discipline, right? It's something this is, I mean, many, many years ago, these charts, but you know, believing that you have what you want is, is, is the first step. I'm not going to go all Tony Robbins on you and stuff, you know, don't get that from me, but there is an element of that there where you have to kind of believe that you are a disciplined trader and believe that you are becoming a more and more disciplined trader and again, the thoughts and actions have to align. Hey, I, I why do I think that? Well, because I'm doing pre-market. I, I'm I'm sticking to my risk rules. You know, I, I only break. You know, I, I deviate from my plan. You know, twice this week, and I normally might be four times. Um, you know, I'm always journaling my stuff, and I make sure I read your know, trading book. You know, a month or whatever it is for you, right? And you come up with your own journey there. But it, you you know, you kind of have to get your mind in the right place here. You have to believe that actually. Yeah, it's not an instant fix, and it's never going to be an instant fix, but I only have to make small incremental improvements over time to get to where I want to be as a trader. And I think that that, that holds back very many traders as they want it now, 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 now. But actually, if someone said you could have it in six months, you've just got to do this, this, and this, you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, I think that's the case. Very often it's the urgency of, I want to be disciplined now. You go away, oh yeah, I'm going to be perfectly disciplined. And the next day you make an error, you go, oh, I'm not disciplined. And you end up going around in circles and it's that cycle. Before you know, you can be doing that for years. You know, so 
being being a little bit compassionate with yourself and a little bit understanding that it's not going to be linear discipline. You're going to and one thing I think that can help you is to log like the things that are important to you. So operational things like, hey, I'm going to make sure I check the economic calendar every day. I'm going to make sure I do my pre-market prep every day. I'm going to make sure this. I'm going to make sure I don't chase the market that's going to, whatever it might be, or all these operational things that are going to help you. And then you log how many times you do it in the day. Yes, did it today. Oh, no, I didn't today. You know, I slipped up. That's okay. Don't throw the whole lot under the bus. Don't eat the whole cake. You just say, right, what's week one? All right, I got, you know, 10 ticks there out of a possible, um, whatever it was, 15 or however many ticks you're doing. Okay, fine. Next week, let me try and get 12. And then next week, let me try and get 13. And so you try to improve the discipline muscle over time and support that you do visualization, you do your identity work, you do all the other stuff that's going to help support that. And you say, right, I just want to be a little bit better next week. Just just make sure I get one more, make, make sure I can try and do my pre-market prep just one more day than I did yesterday, uh, last week. And that progressive improvement helps you get to the point where you just don't recognize yourself. Now you can do this on a sheet or you can do this. You guys know I've got the discipline tracker. you more than welcome to download this. I had this designed for me and other traders in Traders Mastermind. If you go to tradersmastermind.com, top right, download this discipline tracker and completely free. It's yours to use. It's a Google sheet. You just copy it. But this is that concept. You don't need this. You can do it on paper by all means, but it's there for you if you'd like. And you kind of put the things that are important to you and you go along and say, what did I do in this month? And then you open a new tab and then you see if I can improve it the next month. And that is the incremental improvement that you get rather than I'm going to fix it immediately. You know, super useful, something like that. I could say, use your sheet if you prefer to or whatever, but that's there and you can use it as a template if you'd like. Um, okay, so summary, guys. Um, define what discipline means to you. What does it look like? How do you want to behave? How do you conduct yourself as a man, as a woman, as a trader? Build your plan to get there. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't need to. A change can happen quickly if you accept that it does take some time. What routines and habits need to be done? How will you add visualization into the mix? And I urge you to try it. I urge you to test it out. There's no downside to it. Uh, and what does progress look like? You know, what, what what does it look like to you? And again, going back to something like that, track your progress. So you say, hey, well, maybe my goal here was 10 and I just did five. Okay, next week, I'm going to make sure I, whatever I put in here, these are kind of templates and ideas, higher time frame analysis, make sure I check that. You do six times next month. You know, make sure I don't take trades in the first 15 minutes, whatever it might, five minutes, check sentiment, whatever the thing is, just a little bit more. And I think that if you can, you know, that you mark that as progress, you go, I'm not where I want to be yet, but I'm better than I was last week. And I'm better than I was the week before. And now my identity is shifting because I know that actually there's a logical pathway to where I need to be, which is a very disciplined trader. And I think this is the biggest unlock for many, many traders. You know, it's not chart patterns. It's not setups. It's this. You know, this is often the one thing that's stopping traders making that breakthrough. Now, sure, other things are important. You know, researching the rhythm of the market, the structure of the market, and you know, patterns that repeat themselves in the market and supply demand imbalance and all that other good stuff. Of course, it's important, right? We need to have edge. But actually, for many traders, it's just having the discipline to not get sucked into trades when they're not there's nothing there, to not overtrade, to not get revenge trades, and not all this stuff that that just you know really puts a spanner in the works for so many promising traders. So give it the attention it deserves, put a plan of action together. And, you know, by the new year, you know, oh, new year, no way, no, that time, you might be a completely different trader. By the end of the month, you could be a completely different trader. But, but think where you could be in 2025, completely different trader. It's worth putting the effort in. Um, and whatever year it is that you're listening to this, if it's on the record as well, whatever year applies to you. Okay, ladies and gents, I have run on for quite a while with this, but you can see I think it's quite an important topic. I like this topic because I think it's one of the things that can pull the lever, have the biggest lever pull. If you've got any questions, gents and ladies, then please feel free to stick them in the Q&A. I'll bring you over here and I'll bring you over here. Um, okay. Uh, yes, the book is Dr. Steve Peters. Thank you, Svante and Alex. Um, uh, anonymous attendee says, Earl Nightingale, think of the person you want most want to be and begin to think and act like that person would act in every situation. My mantra is I'm Mark Holstead, I'm Trader Dante. Well, I appreciate that anonymous attendee. But you know what? There's something you have said there which is important. And um, I didn't mention this, and maybe I should. 
very often, it's, just, it's a separate topic, and we're going to do a, a webinar at some point about confidence, but very often you can have a, um, not necessarily one person, you can have a board of directors in your mind, so a, a faux board of directors, if you like, and let's say you had traders you would admire, hedge fund managers you would admire, at people you would admire, and you go around and ask them. So maybe you have Steve Ward there, maybe you have Brett Steenbarger, maybe you have Tom Hugard, maybe you have... Uh, Dante, maybe whatever you have there and you kind of sit there and go, well, I'm trying to make this plan. What do you say? And you've got Tom who got us like, you had, you had size, you know, you push when you, you got this, you, you trade without fear, you know, whatever it might be. And you've got Steve Ward who says, oh, listen to the voice here and you know, visualize this. And you've got, you get the idea. Maybe Trader Dante saying something that's a bit too uh, blue for this webinar, but you get the point. You can go around and kind of grab the things and bits that you need and create that kind of artificial board of directors in your mind. So yeah, that's a great concept. Um, Gary says, great point, seeking incremental improvement. Excellent session. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, I'm glad you liked that. Anonymous attendee says, please, is this webinar recorded? I hope so. I think it is. Should be out. Pepperstone will send it out to you. If you register for this, they will send you out the recording. Nina says, thanks. Thank you, Nina. Uh, Junaid says, thank you for the presentation. Some strong points. A good health check in this area of my trading. Good. I'm glad, Sunaid. David says, uh, do, 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 do. Um, long question. I still don't get how you combine 15, five and one minute to get the entry in the one minute. You know what, David, this is a, it's more of a technical question. It's a good question. You're talking about the flag on the 15, how you do it. I'll hold that thought. If you come, we're going to do a more ta uh, strategy based webinar at some point, but I want to keep this one. Uh, I'm sure you understand on discipline, but it's a very good question. Um, so bring it again at some point, David, and we'll definitely get to that. Um, I think that is every, oh no, a few more apologies. Um, Marie says, thank you so much. Very appreciate some nice concepts. Thank you, Marie. James says, thanks. Very good. All right. I'm glad you guys liked it. Hopefully some takeaways there, take some action on the stuff that you find valuable. Um, and you know, let me know how you get on. You can always contact me. I send a daily email out every day, uh, that hopefully will help you with trading some ideas like this strategy stuff, observations. You can always reply to that. If you're on that reply to that, that will get to me. And David, you can ask that question there and I will you know, certainly do my very best to answer that as well. Thank you, ladies and gents. Bering says, are you going to share this recording? Yeah, Pepperstone will send it. If you register for this, they will send out the recording to you so you can watch that. And it's normally um, 24 hours, if that. All right, ladies and gents, thank you so much for your attendance and um, attention. Have a good trading rest of the day not much left of it have a good trading rest of the week and i shall see you soon take care guys bye bye